I was going through some old storage the other day and I came across something interesting. My old portfolio from 2003 that I used to get my first job at Nike. I came across both my teaser portfolio as well as my in-person portfolio. Now, back then you couldn't just be emailing huge files across. So this teaser portfolio was actually in a big manila envelope and it was what I used to physically send in to Nike. Um, and then as well as the physical portfolio that I presented when I was there on the interview day, which was six or seven hours straight of panel interviews with three different departments. The reason why I wanted to share this portfolio with all of you is because it really, I think, flies in the face of a lot of the conventional wisdom around creating a highly edited, very curated portfolio. Sometimes those very edited portfolios start to all kind of blend into one each other. It looks almost like everyone's copying the same portfolio and they just start to all become these kind of cookie cutters. This portfolio that I'm about to show you is really unique to my style, the way I like to present. I like to keep things really conversational. Um, I like to keep it casual. I don't necessarily want to follow a set routine with the way I present. I want to be able to jump and skip. If I hear someone ask a question or make a comment, I want to be able to move around in the portfolio really easily. So these materials that I'm going to show you are really designed for me to do that. All right, let's jump into it. So the first thing we're gonna flip through is the teaser portfolio that I mailed in. What I used to like to do is just to simply print out a bunch of work examples and my resume and clip them into a clipboard, send the clipboard along. I, uh, I used to get a lot of comments that people used to love to keep the clipboard. This was obviously long before my iconic MD logo, not quite as, as good of a logo back then, but it did the trick. All right, let's. Let's unclip it and see the samples that I, I sent in. So just simple eight and a half by 11. All I wanted to do with this teaser is show the team that I had the, the skills that they were looking for um, enough that they want to bring me in for an interview. I really didn't give away any kind of um, project insights. I wanted to just whet their appetite enough so that they would give me the shot to fly in and explain things more to them. So some some full bleed photos showing products and projects that were um, that made it to market some process insight sketches i almost didn't want them to spend too much time with this i wanted them to see it and be like yeah let's bring that person in i want to learn more it's kind of the goal of a teaser in today's world of kind of unlimited behance space and core flat portfolios and everybody being able to pretty much build their own websites companies tend to get much more of a process insight into you. So when I was working at Evo Design right out of school, we did a lot of projects for Nike directly, specifically with the Innovation Kitchen. Notice this shoe in particular looks a lot like another designer shoe that was done just a few years later. I, I was told that he saw that prototype down in the Innovation Kitchen before that shoe uh, came to be. If you know what shoe I'm talking about, why don't you uh, leave a comment down below. That wraps up the teaser portion of the portfolio. Let's dig into what I brought in person. So when I was thinking about what I wanted to show in person, I wanted to really surprise people. So what I brought was this giant poster of, I don't know, like 80, 90 different pieces of footwear ideas. And you know, none of these ideas are really fully fleshed out. They're, they're really high level concepts. Keep in mind, this is before Nike Free. This is before anything knit. Uh, this is before anything really direct inject. But I just wanted to show them that I could think really differently. And I had the benefit of, through Evo, working a lot with the Innovation Kitchen. So I kind of knew the types of ideas that they were looking for, the things that would really excite them. And I just wanted to show them that I was full of ideas. In addition to having that giant poster as a backdrop, I brought five or six of these different books just filled with all kinds of projects. So one book was just on traditional product design. Here you can see a lot of work for Kodak, um, some hard drive concepts. These are blood pressure monitors, all different things. Again, just showing them the different types of projects I'd worked on that would be maybe uh, that would make me seem unique compared to maybe some of the designers they had that had worked mostly in footwear. 
Here I'm showing just tons of different razors I had worked on, consumer electronics, huge breadth of work. That it was a huge breadth of work that I got working at a consultancy. I also spent quite a bit of time working on projects for Timex. So a lot of different watch projects. At that time, Nike was making a lot of watches. So I thought that would be really relevant. And uh, a lot of their watches were kind of influencing the industry. So again, just kind of showing that influence and showing that I can go in depth in a category that wasn't footwear. Something that, again, thinking about what's gonna make me unique in their eyes compared to all the different people that are gonna be interviewing at Nike. This was a book of houseware sketches. I don't know, I always love that sketch of that pepper mill, even though it's kind of ridiculous. Some, uh, some stemware concepts, wine bottle openers, these tea kettles were for Chantal, a bunch of these went to production actually. Um, but again, giving them this, this kind of insight into my thought process, showing them the kind of volume of ideas that I have, and also giving me the ability to jump around when they had questions, slow things down, speed things up, um, having a nice backdrop for, of different things to show as I talked to them and, and we got to kind of figure out uh, each other's personalities in each interview. And these books got me through, again, it was like six, seven hours of interviews. So it, it helped me to also keep it fresh and not have to like just tell the same story over and over again during six different interviews over a seven hour period. These were a bunch of different foam, just mock-ups of footwear concepts that I worked on while I was at Evo. Those were really cool actually. Just some really out there, interesting ideas kind of pebble outsole. I don't think that was a very good idea, but kind of a cool sketch. Um, this was uh, this kind of fish scale inspired outsole where you'd have all these kind of rubber scales that would open up. That actually is probably still a pretty good idea. It would be really grippy in, in wet things. But again, showing them that even though I didn't have the experience in taking footwear all the way to production, I could certainly generate a ton of ideas. The last few books I brought were on transportation. These were some sketches from my school days as well as from some competitions that I had entered. Man, I haven't looked at these sketches in years. Some of these are, are not very good. But some of them are kind of fun. For some reason, I was really infatuated with these three-wheeler commuter cars. I don't know why. These were kind of Canson renderings. Those are actually still kind of cool. Just some, some different ideas. Again, throwing them out there, showing what I can do. Um, and keeping things light. I like to kind of keep things in the, the idea space. I think that's where you know, some of my, my value is, is just kind of in the upfront concepts. What is it that we're doing? Why are we doing it? This book was actually from my, my senior thesis that I did uh, as a sponsored project for Nissan. It's a family car for, for Gen Xers. So again, I haven't, I haven't really looked at this stuff in such a long time, but um, yeah, I wonder, I wonder what they thought when they were looking at it. I mean, I got the job. I got a job offer literally two days later, which is not very common. And Nike usually kind of takes its time really thinking about people. So obviously it did the trick, but um, you know, it's just, it's just interesting to look at it. Some of this work is, it's so, it's so rough. But again, I think it was just the volume that impressed them and all the different variety of ideas that I brought. This was a, a gym that uh, where all the, all the gym equipment generated electrical power. So the idea is that it was like a little powerhouse. Um, these were projects for Samsonite. So showing some, some tech pack work, I wanted to be able to sh demonstrate that I could go into depth and really specify things and show how things were to be made. Uh, in terms of communicating with sample rooms and, and a factory. And then again, just m more and more Nike concepts from my time at Evo. So I think my strategy here was to just blow them out of the water with this just like sheer volume. I've just, I've never been one to just highly, highly curate things. So again, this really kind of suited me and my style. Most of this work was from, I'd say between 1998 and 2003. So a really long time ago. Some of you watching this might not even have been born yet. All right, everybody, thanks for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope it shows you that you don't need to have this overly curated 
cookie cutter portfolio that looks like everybody else's. Create the portfolio that fits you. This portfolio really suits me. I'm someone that likes to present a lot of things. I like to keep things very conversational. Um, and so this portfolio really facilitates my style. So when you put together your portfolio, think about how you like to talk. Think about how you interview and how you wanna come across and design the materials to go along with your presentation style. These materials were highly unique, a giant poster and five or six books. And uh, I wanted the interview to be really memorable to the people that were interviewing me. And I think those materials helped me to do just that. Do you have any unique interview stories? Leave me a note down in the comments. I'd love to hear about the different materials that you put together for your portfolios that helped you to get some of your jobs. As always, if you like this video, I'd love it if you liked and subscribed and feel free to share it with someone that might need a little bit of guidance in putting together their portfolio.